This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. There was a very poor man who had decided at one point in his life to commit suicide. So he goes up to the top of the building and he peers over the end and he sees, whew, that's a, that's a heavy drop, that. But you know what? Time has come. And he says to himself, you know, I'm a little bit hungry. I think I'm going to eat something before I, you know, leave this world. And he goes into his pocket to see what he has over there. He has a couple of beans. So I'll eat the beans. So he starts sitting down and he eats the beans. And he takes the, you know, the, the shell and the peel or whatever it is. And he tosses it over the side of the building. And he watches in amazement how he sees a very, very poor man, seemingly poorer than him, reach down to these little skins, little peels of these beans that he just threw off the building, and eats them. I, I think that's unbelievable. Like, what are you doing? So he runs down the stairs of the building, and he goes over to the guy and he says, hey, what are you doing? What are you eating these, these peels of beans? So the guy says, I'll be honest with you. I'll be very honest. I'm a very, very poor man. I haven't actually eaten for about two and a half days. I'm, I'm, I'm physically starving hungry. I haven't eaten. And I dove into the Rebbeinu Shalom, that I got the should please give me food, even if it's a peel of something. And all of a sudden, that moment, I see floating down from Shemayim, these little peels of beans. I said, wow, I got the who obviously wants me to have this as food, and I start eating them. And this man that was a moment ago about to commit suicide, says, wow, there's somebody out there that's actually poorer than me. There's someone out there that has a harder life than me, I should really thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu for what I have. And the Zoya HaKadosh writes, and the Zoya HaKadosh, that says that often we only thank the Rabbi Nishlon when something that we have actually doesn't appear anymore. Something that we have has gone missing. Something that we, we feel that we're missing something. And there's, a, there's an Indian that I wanted to speak about today for the few minutes that we have. A very, very harsh of an Indian, which I do believe is something that we all require, Chizikin, myself included, obviously. But it's just something that we have to work on. And then there's the halacha of a benching, right? It's that interesting thing called benching, right? Which nowadays is a very, very rare occurrence because now we have bazonas bread and we have everything bazonas that I'll never, ever, ever have to bench again. But still, there are many occasions that we do bench. I want to tell you a few things about benching. Open up your eyes a moment to see what is benching. There's a yaivitz. The yaivitz has a sefer called Chazdei Hashem. And the Yaivitz writes like this. He says a very interesting thing. He says there are certain mitzvahs that have siyat dishmaya. There are certain mitzvahs that have a wonderful muzzle that people keep and they keep it properly, right? Mahadrin, mina mahadrin, Hanukkah. Right? Purim, right? Chay of Inish, right? There are certain, certain halachas, there are certain mitzvahs, says the Yaivitz, that are just, they just have that, you know, muzzle that people keep properly. And then says the Yaivitz, there are certain mitzvahs that just don't have the muzzle. They're just something missing. They just don't have the muzzle. One of those, says the Yaivitz, is Birch HaSamozi. And he says to the Yaivitz an amazing thing. He says that, you know, everybody's Mekayim, what the Torah says, Ochalto Vesavata, right? Well, Mekayim, not Mahadrim and Mahadrim. We've got no problem eating, we've got no problem being satisfied. That's fine. And we'll relax when we're eating, and we'll eat slowly, and we'll eat properly. But who's Mekayim, the next part of the Posuk of Ubeirachta? Who's Mekayim, the next part, that all of a sudden, after having a huge long meal of such a long time, that all of a sudden you need a bench, so you've got to do it in 25 seconds flat, because you've not got to, you've got a bench, you've got to do it quickly. So the Ayavitz write that's an amazing thing. The Chaseba Chinuch, in Mitzvah Tov Lamed, says as follows, I don't want to quote you the words of the Chinuch. He says that this, Kach Mukubal Ani Mirabaisai. This I was Mekabel, I accepted from my rabbis, from my Rebbeim. Says the Seifa Chinuch Shekola Zoy Bebircha Samozoin. If a person is careful in benching, unbelievable. That means that we have a skula over here, tried and tested, guaranteed, that if a person is zahir, means he's careful, A, to bench, and B, properly, then not only is it a skula to be rich, but it's also a skula to have parnasa, covered for the rest of your life. It's an amazing thing. If you look at the Sefer Hasidim, the Sefer Hasidim, as you know, says very, very scary things. Sefer Hasidim brings a maisa of a person that was nifta, very, very young. Twelve months later, he appeared to somebody. There was a maisa in the shulma. He appeared to somebody twelve months after he was nifta, and they said to him, "No, how's it going up there? What's going on in the next world? So he said, listen, I can't reveal to you very, you know, all these things that what's going on. But he said, one thing I can tell you. Rabbi says, Sefer Hasidim brings this down the maisa. 
So the one thing I can tell you, every single day, so not a day goes by that I'm not being judged for not saying brochas and birchas hamozen carefully. And that's very, very scary. And that's very scary. Because again, everybody say maybe brochas, brochas are showing Maybe we do say, we say shahak on them, it's very, we say boom, and it's only, no, we say it. Right? Because the Gemara tells us in brochas that if a person doesn't say it's kilu geisel from the rabbi nishra, in fact, they found the modika beis yosef. The beis yosef says that Gemara that says that if a person steals, if a person eats without a brocha, he's stealing from Hashem, the beis yosef learns that it's actually going also on brochas hamozen. Not only on a bracha rishona, meaning I'm asking permission to eat before I eat, but it's actually going on birchas hamozen as well. And therefore, a person has to realize that birchas hamozen is a very, very serious thing. There's a very interesting Gemara in Brochas Tafnun Gimel Nomen Beis. Let me read you the Gemara. And this is something we can all to relate to when we read this Gemara, we understand this Gemara, we can understand exactly what's going on. The Gemara tells us, Nun Gimel Nomen Beis in Brochas, famous Gemara, Rabba Babar Chano was in a whole caravan of people, right? That's what it used to be called in the older days. You went in a whole group of people. It was dangerous to travel by yourself. It was like you go in a caravan, a whole group of people. And they traveled together to minimize the sakona, the dangerous aspect of traveling. Anyway, he was traveling in a whole group of people. And he realized to himself, oh my gosh, I forgot to bench. Can you imagine? Baruch Hashem, it doesn't only happen to us. It happened to Rabbi Baruch HaLeh. He forgot to bench. So what do you do? So he thinks to himself, what do I do? If I'm going to tell them, hey guys, I forgot to bench. Can I go back? Right? Because the Allah is obviously meant to go and bench where you ate. So guys, can you just wait here while I just run back and bench? What are they going to say? Ah, come on. You know how it is. Don't be so machme. Stop being so from. I'm sure you can bench over here. And I've heard eights and coolers that you're allowed to eat bread here and bench over here. It's not a big deal. As long as you can see the place. You know, you know how it goes. Since I can't tell them that, forget that. So what am I going to tell them? So one of, someone over there suggested, very simple. Don't tell them that. You know what you should tell them? Tell them you left a gold dove, a pure gold dove, in the place where you ate. I guarantee they'll, they'll, they'll let you stop. And that's exactly what happened. He said to them, guys, you can't believe this. I left a gold, pure gold dove over there. Like, wow, you have a gold dove. It's unbelievable. Why don't you tell us, hey, we're in a rush. You know what? Run back and get it. We'll wait for you a few minutes, right? And that's exactly what happened. Tells us the Gemara. Not only did they allow him to go back and bench, and he did go back and bench, but the Gemara continues that he found a pure gold dove. Which is from there where the Chazal derive that the person benches properly, meaning in the correct place, in the correct situation, he's Zoycha Ta'ashiris, he's Zoycha Ta'panosa. Because a gold dove is very expensive. And the Gemara tells us a wonderful thing, it's a tremendous, tremendous schooler, there's a Yalkut Shemaini. The Medrash, Rabbi Yisrael, I'm meeting over here to Medrash, you guys are very lucky you came this morning, I'm going to turn around your benching for the rest of your life, for those that bench. The Yalkut Shemaini, the Medrash says... That when a person benches, it's as if he's Mekayim Kol HaToyrat. Unbelievable Medrash. Why? Because it says, V'achal to V'zavat, and after it says, Kol HaMitzvah. So you see, they're tied together. There's a Zoya Kodesh, right? We love schoolers, right? As I always say this, I sound like a broken record. But if we'd be able to find a scholar for every simon in Shulchan Aruch, can you imagine? Everybody will Mekayim all the mitzvahs. Everyone will Mekayim all the Allah, because there's a scholar for this, there's a scholar for that. And we have to go to Muka, walk around eight times over there in order to get married, because otherwise we can't get married, right? That's how it works, right? So here we have a Zoya Kodesh. If you want to live a long life, now which person of here doesn't want to live a long life? Let's go around the room asking, guys, want we'll to live a long life? I don't think anybody's going to say, well, I don't know, I'm not so sure, it's very difficult here, and there's lots of disayness, and yet so horrors, and it, I don't think so. I think most people want to stay here for as long as possible. Since the Zoya Kodesh, you want to stay here for longer? Bilchas HaMozin, bench. Not only bench, but bench properly. The Zaya Kodesh as well brings a ride from there as well, from Ki Kodesh Oni. Okay, there's a Chinuch as well that we mentioned as well, Reb Chaim Vital brings us in Sefer Amitzvah, that a person has to bench with Kavona because he says, and these are scary things, I don't personally understand them, or maybe I do, but I can't reveal them to you, whatever it may be. But this, the, the Reb Chaim Vital explains that when a person benches with Kavona, he has to. And the reason for that is because the Sitra Acher, do you dare Reb Chaim what that is, is standing over there and he's about to prosecute against you until you bench with Kavona. So you guys better bench with Kavon. You know, so people always ask, you know, schoolers and eitzes, people used to go to Rav Shach. People used to go to Rav Shach. And they said, Rabbi, give us an eitzes, we're having this problem in life, having that problem in life, all sorts of things. In fact, there was a famous Rosh Kodal from Imre Yosef Chaya Moshe. Anyway, so he used to go to Rav Shach very often. One particular time he went to Rav Shach to speak to him about something, he waited 15 minutes for Rav Shach to finish benching. Again, let's repeat that. He had to wait 15 minutes 
to a shark to finish benching. I'm not talking about to finish the sandwich or the shawarma or the falafel. I'm talking about to finish benching. You have to wait 15 minutes. An unbelievable thing, right? So they asked the Rebbe, how do you do that? That takes me like, I don't know, 25 seconds, 40 seconds. You know, it depends on the mood, maybe two minutes. How do you do that? So the shark said, what do you mean? He said, because Chazal tell us that if a person has kavona during benching, he has tremendous yata dishmai and parnosa richas yomim. All the wonderful, wonderful brachas come from that. And in fact, and in fact, they used to come to a shark with eight says, give me, Rebbe, give us an eight, sir. We've got this problem, this situation, this tzara. If shark said, I have an eight, sir, for you. He gives you many eight, sir. But one of the things he used to say is be macabre on yourself to bench inside a siddha. So they would say, oh, come on, you know, we're expecting some huge thing. Say to him 16 times a day, go to a mukha, go to here, go. Just bench in a siddha. Like, come on. She said, what do you mean? That, that's what I'm working on. And if Shach used to be makbid, he had a, t- 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 a Kabbalah from the Vilna going that if a person benches inside a siddha, it's a school and he'll have kavana. And if Shach was makbid on it, one time they saw if Shach in the middle of benching getting up to get a new siddha. And they couldn't understand it. Shach was very makbid his kavana. What's Shach? He said, because the corner of the siddha was missing a few words. You know, it was torn, the corner of the siddha. I couldn't see those words inside. My kabbalah is to bench inside the siddha. So I went to get another siddha to see those words inside. Now, Rabbi said, I'm shach, new benching. Probably better than any of us sitting here right now. I speak for myself, but, you know, you have to forgive me if I'm wrong. But I think with shach, new benching better than us. He probably knew the perish amilis. He probably knew the translation. He probably knew the understanding. He probably even knew the kabbalistic understandings and meanings behind the words. But Rav Shach understood that you bench in a siddha. Why? Kavona. Intention. A person has to have the right kavona. A person has to realize what it is. In fact, Rav Shlomo Zalman, as you do, Rav Shlomo Zalman never repeated a pasuk. Never repeated anything. He said it, he said it properly when he used to daven. Anyone that watched Rav Shlomo Zalman daven, it was like the Gemara tells us, that you may, it's like to make, you have to be counting money. When you count money, there's... <laughs> The person that counts money knows how to count money, every single one, properly, according to its time. So Shlomo Zalman davened, every word was beautifully said. There was no need for him ever to repeat anything. One time, they found Shlomo Zalman repeating Noi de Lecha. Right, the second paragraph. They asked him, what's that? She said, well, Noi de Lecha is thanking the Rabbi Nishlarim. And I felt myself in the middle, I was Mesiyach Das, I wasn't thinking about it. Noi de Lecha without Kavon is not Noi de Lecha. How can I thank a Kodesh Baruch How can I have proper Kodesh HaToyv if I do not fully understand um, what HaKadosh Baruch Hu has given me and if you don't understand what HaKadosh Baruch Hu has given you then in Achanami you can't, can't properly thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I just want to mention a couple more things before we finish the time is taka late but you have to know as well a very important thing as well there's a little talks of halachas that we're not going to of hearing the words that you're saying uh, in fact the Chazanish was one of the Kinyeski says he remembers when he was younger he was in the house of the Chazanish and there was someone there who was benching whatever it was someone there was benching and you know how it is, in the middle of benching, you, you find the guy that you want to speak to, you say to him, mm-mm, 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 you know, you know, you guys don't know what I'm talking about, hello, it's just me, okay, you have these people that do these things, right, you have these people that do these things, so somebody does that, so the Chazan Ish, after you finish benching, says, I don't understand, would you do that in the middle of Shemun Ezra? Like, none of us would think, a Chazanish Ben Ezra would never dream of doing such a thing, we're talking to the Rabbi Nishalaylam, so the Chazan Ish benching was the same thing. Benching isn't that thing you just have to do after you eat something. It's more serious than that. It's an understanding of what HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave you. It's an understanding to, wow, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us every single thing that we have, and therefore we have to appreciate that. That's what's so important. That's what we have to realize. And in fact, let's just finish with a couple of interesting things like this. There is a very interesting uh, Chazal. In fact, the Chazal tells us about Keach, one of the Rishonim, writes that if you look at all of benching, there is never a final pay, pace of fit. Right? Scan it in. Right, that's how long it takes to bench. Just scan it in. Figure out there's not one pay, end of pay, final pay in the entire benching. What's the reason? Says the Reikeach, because if you look in Chazal, a final pay is that which represents all sorts of problems of anger and disease. And therefore, he says the Reikeach, one of the Rishonim, that when a person benches properly, He's Zoycha not to have any final pays. There's no anger. There's no diseases. Everything that he has is in the right place and should be done properly. And I just want to mention just for two more minutes. What is benching anyway? Let's just go through a minute of the structure just to understand. There are four brachas in benching. Three daraisa, that's the first three. And one of them, the rabbonon. 
The first one is on food, the second one is on Eretz Yisrael, the third is on Yerushalayim, the fourth is on the Toiv, on the Eretz HaToiv. The first bracha, Moshe Rabbeinu was masakin in the Midbar, which is an amazing thing. Because can you imagine waking up in the morning and find a crisp $100 bill next to, your be- uh, next to your bed saying, hey guys, off you go, go spend it for the day. Daily spending money, $100 a day. That's exactly what happened in the Midbar. They got the mon, and we thank Takadosh Baruch Hu for it. That's exactly what Moshe Rabbeinu was masakin when he was masakin the first bracha Birchas Samozon. He was masakin it because that's the food that they got over there. The second one, Yeshua was masakin when he came into Eretz Yisrael. The third bracha David Amelech was masakin. The fourth one, Gamliel was masakin when they had Rishus to enter the enter Beitar. As we know, the Gemara Brachas tells us so famously, they came and they killed a lot of Yidden in Beitar, and the bodies were left there for a very very long time. They finally, after years, got permission to go in to Beitar and to bury the dead that were over there, which was a tremendous, tremendous thing. And the Gemara tells us Rabbi Gamliel was masakin. Through that, he was masakin, the benching. So therefore, Rabbi said, we have to understand, and this is what the Gemara in Brochas tells us, Memchassam and Beis, that the bracha of benching, all the brachas included, is hakoris hatoiv. To understand and to come to the realization that everything comes from the Rabbani Shalom. This is what we're doing, is what benching is. Benching is the realization that it's not me, it's the Rabbani Shalom. Where everything that I eat, everything that I get is Bashkoch Protas, comes from the Rabbani Shalom. In fact, Rabbi Chatzka Levenstein writes in Uri er, in Cheskel and Elul Nishmuz, he says, you know, a natural thing of a person, a teva, that we have in our bodies is to think we create and we do everything. We have the power for everything. It's unfortunate. It's against, it's against the Torah. Because of course the Rabbi Shem gives us everything, but he says it's natural in our own bodies and our own lives to think that when we go to work and come back with a paycheck, that's us. And the problem is that's not true. And he says, says Rabbi Chatzka Levinshin, that it's eights is that the Rabbi Shem gives us to stop this. And that is one of them is benching. Because the whole benching, look at the words, open up an art school and read the beautiful words of benching. Every word of benching is to say, who gave us everything, he feeds us, he sustains us, he keeps us going. That's what benching is. And that's what we're meant to be thinking about next time we open up that bencher and fly through the benching before we get the opportunity to fly. Let's think for a minute, what are we doing? What are we accomplishing? Who are we thanking? What are we thanking HaKadosh Baruch Hu for? I mean, let's just end with one last unbelievable Svas Emes. The Svas Emes, in Baruch Islam and Hey, it's an unbelievable Svas Emes. Never heard such a Svas Emes like this. The Svas Emes wants to know that if it's the mitzvah the rice at the bench, as we know, it's a mitzvah the rice at the bench. So why isn't there a Baruch Hashem the Shon of a mitzvah so Sivonu to bench? Like there is for every other Doraisa. Even the Rabbonans, we have brachas like that. Why is there no bracha? Ask the Svas Emes. Beautiful kasha, Svas Emes is kasha. Answers the Svas Emes because it's a mitzvah sikhlis, it's so obvious. How can you say a shekidishonu but mitzvah so vetzivonu that the Kodesh Baruch Hu commanded us to bend? What are you, crazy? You don't realize for a minute what you got? You don't have the appreciation for what the Rabboni Shalom gave you? It's a mitzvah sikhlis as a Svas Emes. It cannot be on such a mitzvah to say a shekidishonu but mitzvah so vetzivonu. You just have to bench. Because when a person comes to realization of what he has, and what a Kodesh Baruch has given him, before a Kodesh Baruch takes it away, then Be'ez HaShem, we have Siyat HaTishmaya, and all the brachas that are in benching will Be'ez HaShem become a kroom to us. We should be zoichet to be kind in Salacha. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. You've just experienced another Torah class, brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.